All right, so now I'm recording. Okay, are you ready for the first question? Sure. Okay, um, just first of all, to get it um, out of the way, what were you convicted of? Working at child porn or the uh, legal term for it is exploitation of a child under the age of 18. Okay. Um... Under the age of 18. Okay, so w was that two separate things, or is the child pornography, does that count as exploitation of a child? Well, well exploitation of a child is looking at child pornography or, you know, so. Okay, and so you were convicted once. Is I that was, right? I, uh, yeah. Or, um, was there anything else in your history that, um is noteworthy um, in this same category? Uh, if you don't... In my history? Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you feel like, if you're not comfortable to answer, don't don't answer any of it, but if you... I was molested from the age of 13 to 16. Okay. And I was forced to molest others. Wow. Man, uh, okay, that's, um, and was it, uh, by someone close to you, or, a, a neighbor. neighbor, okay, wow, um, back then, did they have the, um, sex offenders list so that people were able to be aware of what neighbors were dangerous or not? I don't know, back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. They didn't even have computers really back then. Yeah, good point. That's right. Um, okay, um, maybe we'll maybe I'll ask you some more questions about that in a moment, possibly. But um, can you tell me um, how the church has um, reacted to um, finding out about this? Ha have they treated you any differently? Different churches that you were a part of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I got arrested, they came to the jail to see if it was true. And then they just pushed me out. They didn't want nothing to do with me no more. Mm. Was it um, a pastor that came to talk to you or some of the elders? Uh, I, oh, you don't I have think to. it was an elder. Okay. Um, and... Um, did they make it like a conditional statement that if this is true, um, we have to um, distance ourselves, or did they? No, they didn't say anything to me about that. They just came to see if it was true, and I tried calling a couple times, and they just refused to talk to me. So, well. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, to me, I just. No, oh, God does not do that. Yeah, exactly. To me, God does not do that. Right. Um, <clears throat> can you tell me about um, some of the some restoration that has happened since then, in any in any way? Uh, when I went to prison in 2012. I started going, so I was writing you, and I started going to church there, and kind of find my, found myself. I, I can't say I found God, because he was never lost. Yeah. You know? hmm. hmm. So, I've been, when I got out, I started going to, I got out in February 2013, and I started going to a church in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they helped me out a lot. They, uh, they knew about my charges. They said, that's fine. Mm -hmm. so we will be keeping an eye on you, you know. So, I mean, that, not that I'm going to do anything. It's just because of my parole officer at the time. You know, I had to have to let the pastor know and, Sure. I wasn't allowed to 
down to go into the uh, anywhere where they have kids meetings or anything. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Did you feel like um, that was a good response overall? Yeah, I mean, I love that church. Uh, I just don't like Wichita. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so I mean, if, I, if I ever won the lottery, I swore I would go to that one church right there and make a great donation. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the people in that church? Um, are they rich people or poor people, um, old or oh, young? Of rich, poor, old, and young. They had everything, huh? Yep. Um... Were there any other things that kind of distinguished them from other churches you had seen? Yeah, the pastor, Pastor Josh Bush, he is, he is the greatest pastor I've ever met. You know, it's, he is very godly. I mean, you can see the, I guess, I, well, I can't, I can see the uh, aurora or the glow of like, God or, or surrounding him, you know. Mm. Can you tell me about so, some of the other things that he did? Sorry to interrupt you. Like for the people, I guess. What do you mean? Um, can you think of any other ways that we could sort of see his godliness? Um, was it in the way that he preached, or the way that he interacted with people, or what he did for people? Uh, well, he moved, God moved my heart to where, you know, he told me that what I did, basically what I did was wrong, but he, he forgave me because I asked for forgiveness. Mm. Wow. Uh, just like uh, I told you a few years ago that off the subject. I used to worship something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, God forgave me on that, too. Hmm. Wow. <clears throat> cool. Um, do you have any, like, advice of um, people who don't really know what to do? Um, if there's someone in their neighborhood or in their life or their church um that has been convicted of something similar, or they know is involved in something similar, is there a healthy way for the average Joe to just interact um, with with people who have... Um, Don't judge by the cover. You know, I mean, yeah. everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible states, we don't judge others. Mm -hmm. Unless you judge. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the problem I have trying to find a job is, you know, this, this is going to be on me for the rest of my life. And they judge me because of it. And, you know, they say there is no cure for it, but there is. What's that? Well, you do have sex classes you can go to, but if you have faith in God and trust in God, you can change. Wow, wow. <clears throat> have you found um, that as being one of the most powerful ways that you've changed in your life? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, except for my past, when I was a little like um are you able to talk a little bit more about what happened you don't have to be super graphic or anything um if you don't want to just just so we can kind of commiserate with you we can kind of feel your pain Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, 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 he had three other kids there. They were all two brothers and a sister. The oldest brother was older 
the knee. And then the two, the younger, the brother and the sister were like twins, they were ten. And how they did it is they took turns having sex with me and the girl I was forced to do her. She was screaming and hollering and all I could just say is I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Was he um, just, uh, was the adult just stronger than you guys, or did he have a weapon, or, um... Oh, yeah, he was a, he, he's a lot stronger. Yeah. And he uh, basically... He, if, he, if we didn't listen to him, he'd either hit us, throw us against the wall, or put us in the bathtub, and the others would have to go to the bathroom on us. Hmm. Wow. Um... And uh, how did he um, get you guys to come over to the place where this happened? Or, you know, how did uh, how did he get you guys into this situation? Well, I guess he knew this family, the family's mother and father real well, just like he did my parents well. But he talked me into it because I was riding my bike and... I was smoking cigarettes at the time, and he, uh, he got a carton of cigarettes and said, come here, and he gave me a carton of cigarettes, some alcohol, and I said he went to another, and he threatened to kill my parents if I said anything, uh, and I would have to keep going if I didn't want to hurt. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, man. Um... Are you uh, able to kind of track back that as being um, a large part of the source that the reason that led you, I mean, were there some strong influences that made you inclined to um, uh, to look at child pornography because of that? Yes, it is. Uh, after I started serving my second year of being molested and molesting. Uh-huh. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Oh. In my mind, there was nothing wrong with it. And, you know, eventually the, me and the girl were just automatically doing it just for the fun of it because, oh. you know, we got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, man. when I got older and I started looking at porn and stuff and... When I clicked on a picture and it went to child porn, that was the first time I saw that. Mm -hmm. I got excited, yes. I know I didn't think it was wrong at the time because oh. of my past. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I kept looking at it. So then eventually I got caught. Um what was the age difference again between you and the girl? Um when it was happening? She was 10 and I was 13 when we first did it. Man, okay. Man. Is there anything else you'd like to um, say about that? Uh, that if there is anybody out there that went through the abuse, talk about it. Hmm. You know? It's painful. You never forget. All you want to do is kill the person that did it. Wow. But the person that did it to me is already dead, so. What happened to him? I don't know. Okay. Old age, I guess. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, what's the best way to talk to somebody about it? Is, uh, there are certain... Talk to your pastor. Okay. Talk to a very close friend. Talk to go see... Uh, they got plenty of sex classes. For, you know, not for sex vendors, but... Mm. <laughs> for, I mean, uh, counselors to... Oh, counselors. Or, uh, what do you call them? Hedge records or whatever you call them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They, uh, they will help. I mean, if you 
don't have insurance or don't have the money, there are programs out there that you can do it for free. Um, and I assume just a internet search for um, free counseling or something could turn something like that up, maybe? I assume. Uh, that or, yeah, I guess you could do that or, you know, maybe, you know, your pastor could help or something. I yeah. Don't be afraid to talk to someone, you know. Don't hold it in because some people that get molested and stuff, it either they commit suicide. Mm. Rob, you still there? Did I lose you? Let me call you back. Hey. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, it, you're doing fantastic, by the way. This is really good information. Um, okay, so we were just talking about uh, who to who to talk to if you're if you're being abused or struggling with this. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't, you know, especially if you're a female, don't don't do anything stupid. Go talk to someone. I mean. I know you're scared, you're going to think it's your fault, but it's not. Mm. Uh, guys, same way. You think it's because a lot of times I thought about killing myself. Mm. <laughs> but it's not worth it. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because you feel like it's your fault, and that's why you feel like killing yourself? Is that part of it? Uh, yeah. I did. Wow. Man. <clears throat> I, still, I still feel guilty about, you know, the girl. But yeah. Do you know what happened to her? Do you, do you ever hear? I, I never kept track with them. Yeah. You know, once I turned 16, I ran away and took a chance. Oh, he didn't do that to my parents. Oh my gosh, yeah. Are your parents still around? I don't think they are, are they? No, they passed away, finally. Yeah, okay. Of um, nothing related to the the neighbor, right? Uh, uh they were they just died of natural causes, nothing related to violence from the neighbor or anything. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. My mom died of a massive heart attack, my dad died of pneumonia. Okay. Um well, this is really awesome. I really appreciate you telling your story. Um, is there any any other last words that um, you'd like to say? Maybe I could pray if you don't. If you really, as far as abuse goes, really want to talk to someone, uh, have them contact you to be able to contact me. Mm, mm, that's great. Okay, and um, I can forward them to you if someone... Um, well, let me know first. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll have to be um, smart about it um, and careful and stuff. So, okay. All right, my friend. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm not using your name at the moment, just so that we can decide later if we um, include it or not. Uh, but I love you. I really appreciate your friendship over the years. And... Um, Thanks for impart, imparting your wisdom to me. Uh, no problem. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Yep. Safe travels. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Oops, I should have prayed.